Now, I'm not usually a fan of the BBC, as most of you probably already know, but uh, this week, Emma Barnett, the host of Radio 4's Woman's Hour, did what you'd hope a show called Woman's Hour would do and actually defended women. She spoke to the new chief executive officer of the charity Endometriosis South Coast. And endometriosis is a painful condition caused by womb-like tissue growing outside the uterus. So, obviously, it's an issue affecting women. And it actually does affect Emma Barnett. But remarkably, the charity's new boss, Steph Richards, is trans. Here's what Emma had to say to her. There is a concern that as a trans activist now running, being a CEO of an endometriosis charity for women, that you will not preserve the importance of things like the word woman and that experience. Now, uh, I know Emma Barnett. She's been around uh, and done columns in newspapers and done lots of different television and radio jobs, and I think she's um, a pretty good interviewer, actually. And even though I would normally have a go at the BBC for all manner of things, and I may well be having a go at them later on, in this particular case, I think she got it right, because it's so ludicrous to have a particular charity, um, which is a particular, um, shall we say, difficulty that women have, and many women have it, um, but in order to have it, you have to be a woman. She was accused of bullying and conducting a disgraceful interview by, guess what? A man. Yeah, Labour MP Ben Bradshaw came out uh, and basically criticised the way that she had interviewed Steph Richard and said that it was very insensitive and she should have realised that trans women are just the same as women. Well, except that they don't have a womb, they don't have ovaries, they don't have a uterus and they don't have fallopian tubes, all of which are required for you to unfortunately suffer if you're unlucky enough from endometriosis. So I think this particular charity has caught themselves, uh, unfortunately, rather out of step uh, with common sense. And therefore, I say, Emma Barnett, good on you. And leave her alone, Ben Bradshaw. You're a bloke as well, so you've got no business telling her how she should talk about women and how she should actually uh, rescue the image of women, most of whom feel very put upon by this whole trans activism Debate. Ray Fadal Mancou has, has stayed with me. I mean, you probably saw this story a bit earlier on yeah. um, in the week. It is extraordinary how virtue signalling has now reached epic proportions, particularly in charities. Yeah, but it's also remarkable how it's so often it's men now who is, we're seeing who are taking up the trans flag, if I can mm. put it that way. Yes. Including, you know, intimidating women physically at right. marches and at protests. Oh, it's horrible. I find it, it very disturbing. Look, you know when Woman's Hour is actually on side on this issue, that actually we are perhaps coming to a tipping point. We saw it with sports athletes yeah. and the, 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 the clear advantages that trans women have over, over women in sports. You're seeing it now where decent people are actually now speaking up about this. Right. Obviously, knowing that they're going outside of their comfort zone, but they're doing it because they actually there is a real serious issue here about women's rights mm. and women's lives. And when you get things like the women's hour speaking up about this, right. I think it should be enough for everyone to take a notice. Yeah, absolutely right. And there is absolutely no necessity whatsoever to appoint a trans woman who has not got any experience particularly of anything other than campaigning. They say that she's a campaigner, she's an activist, she's actually a trans activist, um, and she's worked for local councils in places. Uh, but what she hasn't done is represented women in any kind of medical arena. I mean, people made the argument to me yesterday, well, what about, per, um, you know, male gynaecologists? Surely they shouldn't be doing that either. Well, no, because that's a doctor. And a doctor is a very different individual with a very different set of skills and qualifications than somebody who happens to just be some kind of activist who wants to push a particular gender ideology. Well, and the disturbing thing here, of course, be it in this case or be it more broadly with quotas and so mm. forth, that this virtue signalling is actually putting into positions of great power people who invariably tend turn out to yeah. be unqualified for the right. job, not the best candidate. Handling loads of money as well, by, yeah. uh, by, given to them by people who are hopeful uh, that this will actually help the cause of women. But, you know, unbelievably so, uh, the continuation of the scandal uh, that is the reworking of words and the reworking of all sorts of things in our current society. Now, 